feels absolutely surreal to be here at Cannes. I don't think I've, I still have uh, properly uh, processed it. Um, especially because uh, this, uh, this film was actually um, an emergency solution. Um, uh, this was my graduation uh, project from the film school that I was at. And originally I was going to make a film about uh, a chicken. A chicken that, uh, that gains intelligence uh, five days before she is to be slaughtered. And everything was planned. We had spent a year prepping it and we've gotten, we'd gotten a chicken farm and a slaughterhouse that, could, that had 5,000 chickens and everything like that. And uh, unfortunately, three weeks before we were uh, going to film, uh, the Danish uh, health, ser health services uh, came with a, a theoretical warning of bird flu. And that meant that we had to uh, change the complete story because we lost all our locations uh, three weeks before uh, filming. So um, this film was actually made in like a, a panicked state of uh, desperation. Um, and well, uh, and now I'm, I, I've never been so happy that uh, bird flu exists in the world. Uh, Ichid Lamind is about uh, two friends who meet in the supermarket and. Um, what starts as a very casual conversation turns into um, a big confrontation about the, the foundation of their friendship um, because uh, one of the friends has blocked the other on Facebook and refuses to talk about it. So the film is uh, pretty much about how uh, conflicts in the, the digital world can slowly filter out into the real world and how the rules of uh, of either realm aren't always as compatible as one would like. Uh, the film is structured as a dance of politeness. It's about what happens when you try to keep a civil conversation, uh, but you, you simply cannot uh, have it, uh, because the truth isn't always as polite, and it isn't always as, as, uh, as well formulated as you would like. Uh, uh, to have, because for example, if if we had a conflict together, um, we wouldn't need, have any need to spell it out um, between us. But uh, on uh, Facebook and other social medias, it is very easy to do like these very hard, hard line things like getting into a relationship, um, blocking each other, uh, spamming, and uh, commenting. And I think. Uh, the film is uh, an attempt to see what happens when you try to say uh, some very brutal things in a very polite way. Well, in itself, uh, our location uh, of a supermarket is one of the most unphotogenic uh, places you could ever make a film, so it was important to give the actors some kind of distinct look so you could tell them apart uh, in all this uh, production-wise chaos. So it was very important to have them in separate colors and to dye one's hair blue and uh, to see if you were able to tell uh, a hidden story about them uh, through the clothes and uh, through uh, how they carried themselves. Uh, there is a very distinct like break in the middle of, um, of the film and we tried also to show the transition through the production design and the camera angles and especially the clothes. Um, I'm a filmmaker from the Faroe Islands who lives in Denmark and uh, I felt it very important to make the film with uh, Faroese actors. So I actually turned to, um, to two actresses that I've uh, worked with before. Uh, we have Marianne Hansen who is um, a trained uh, stage actress in um, uh, in Iceland, and Sissel um, Jatalin, who is um, uh, a university student in Denmark, who is not educated, and I just felt that they had a very interesting uh, chemistry between them. Uh, so what we did there was that we had um, a giant uh, developmental workshop where we tried to see if these two could work together, and their energy was. Uh, quite exciting because uh, they they couldn't manage to be completely polite to each other so it was it gave a very interesting energy in a good way <laughs> when we had this um, Mike Lee-esque workshop uh, we actually invited the cinematographer to work with the actors so uh, that we could plan the visual style with them during the rehearsals and um, we were mostly concerned about how we show the passage of time uh, without uh, falling to uh, to cliches such as a timestamp or 
going from black and white to color. Um, and uh, we think that just by how we're framing it, we uh, hopefully we're able to show a quick way to show the passage of time and how we perceive time. This is actually a quite difficult editing process because um, it's about the fluidity of time and how we perceive our own place in a conflict. So I've never actually experienced um, I've never actually experienced a film uh, production where the editing changed as much as it did because we tried to. Uh, put everything around in different orders and try it out to different uh, chronologies and um, I think it was actually um Actually, in the, the um, in the uh, in the original story, we actually reversed the two halves. Uh, but what happened was that when we reversed the two halves and we started with the end and began with the beginning, people actually thought that uh, the characters were assholes, that they were completely unsympathetic. Uh, but unfortunately, I think that we often, as human beings, can't. Uh, stop being assholes uh, <laughs> in our day-to-day -day life so uh, that is why we put all the assholery in the front uh, so that we actually manage to could manage to identify with the persons and uh, and try to be in their situations before seeing the consequences of their actions so um, hopefully people anybody who laughs during the film will feel guilty during the later half of the film Ellenborg? Ellenborg? Hey? Hey, Merta! Hey! <laughs> no! No! Yeah. Do it! Yeah! Do it! 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 Do